Hello everyone, my name is Bruce Bradbury and I'm a senior developer here at Sky. Um, I've given this talk before, um, in 2018, and it was a chance to revamp the talk to the later versions of Java and Scala. So today we're going to be looking at um, the different language features and comparing some of the basic language features that we use day to day. It's important to note that this is on Scala 2.12 and not on Scala 3. Um, I'm still learning Scala 3 myself. Some of the code uh, references that we see uh, I've created myself. Uh, a few of them I've sourced from open source places on the internet, so that's uh, just a, uh, some credits. So, what features are we going to be comparing? And I wanted to create a list of features that we use every day uh, in our day to day. Um, uh, coding. Starting off, we've got some of the language keywords. Nothing too special here. We've got some ones from, from Java and some new ones. Okay. Interfaces. So, interfaces in Java and Scala um, have a, a logical equivalence. Not fully, but uh, traits can be thought of like interfaces. And from what we can see in the example, um, they're actually very similar in Java 17. Polymorphism. Polymorphism is when you refer to the abstract type, which types may be implementing, and you abstract on this particular level. Um, so the polymorphic line would be uh, the parameter on line 17 in the scar example. Again, if we look at both of the two implementations, they are very similar. And in the later versions of Java, we actually get rid of a lot of the syntax that we have to write just to you know, satisfy the, the Java compiler. Polymorphic functions. So some of these implementations have been left blank, because I'm just trying to show you just the feature itself. Polymorphic functions. Polymorphic functions are when a return type from a function could be variable in its type. And yet again, very similar implementations. Function composition. Function composition is when we compose one or many functions to produce a new function. And in Scala, it's quite nice. We, we have this add and function or compose. And in the release of uh, job A, we had um, the function interface, um, and for this example for function composition from Java, I've taken from the Predicus library, which is a testing library, um, and I think it shows uh, how we can compose uh, functions quite nicely. Higher order functions. Higher order functions um, are when we have a type of a sort of parameter to a function which um, accepts another function, and this is something that is quite nice in Scala, we can just use the um, arrow operator. Again, in Java, this looks very similar in the, in the later versions. Um, we utilize the function interface with um, integer and as the input and integer as the output. Again, very similar. One of the differences between Java and Scala is, is the support for implicit. There was a addition into Java um, for implicit type um, resolution where we can essentially assign anything to a var and use it. But this isn't the same, it, this is not uh, logically the same for Scala. Um, the implicit implementation in Scala allows us to have multiple different uh, types of implicit usage. Um, in example one, we can see an implicit val usage where that value will be added by the compiler at the invocation of that function line, in line 10. In example 2, we can see an example of an um, implicit function, um, which works a little bit like an implicit value. And, we, and in example 3, we can see um, an example of an implicit class. Generics. Again, in Java and Scala, they are very similar, with some limitations, which we'll get onto next. Type balance. 
Again, very similar. We have um, the keywords extend and the, uh, the app, the sort of like pizza uh, arrow uh, for type bounds in Scala. Just pretty much the same, but different syntax. And this is one thing that I haven't seen um, implemented quite nicely in Java, and that's high binder types. So, explaining high high binder types is, has always been quite a hard thing for me to do, and it's quite hard for people to um, to, to get on board with it and uh, understand. So, imagine if we have um, a collection in which we want to pair. Also, two collections, and from these collections, we want to pair them. We can implement a, a function which does this for a list, and we can implement this for a, a function which you know, will, will support sequence. But say, for example, if we wanted to abstract over both list and sequence and provide a generic function which will allow us to do this for any type of collection, that is why we would have this phantom type in online 12, which allows us to essentially abstract over the, um, the collection being used. And that's an example of a high the type. Now, we've looked at some of the programming uh, language features and we've seen that they're quite similar. And this is really uh, in response to a, a question being asked of, uh, Quite a while ago, which was what, what program language is better, um, and what language features do each one have? And people were saying that Scala is better than Java, and Java is better than Scala for certain reasons. But um, I think that actually, from today and the late versions that we can see, um, they're actually quite similar. And what it really comes down to is the way how we implement the thing that we are implementing. Um, and that leads us on to functional programming and object oriented programming. So, Java generally has an object oriented programming stance and really heavily um, enforce that uh, in the language. Um, a lot of people learnt object oriented programming from Java and have used that moving forward. Personally, when I learnt Scala, I started to move into more functional programming side of things. And I felt that the, the language really facilitated that. Um, so maybe we need to move, look to, to move, be a little bit more functional. So this pretty much concludes my, 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 um, my talk. Um, I'm, I just want to leave you with some thoughts. Is it really about the language that we use? Is it really about the versions of the language that we use? Or is it actually about the way how we implement it? And really, what we want is an infrastructure, a mature infrastructure, in which we can deploy multiple different stacks using different versions of whatever language to, to implement whatever problem there is. That's pretty much it for me. Thank you for listening.